Hello, so this week it's the early 60s, which was actually a, such a stylish time. And I'm going to be making a dress which is sort of pieced together from two different dress patterns and with a bit of ad lib. <laughs> so the patterns that I'm going to be using are this one, which I use to make my Brigitte Bardot <laughs> my Brigitte Bardot dress and this one which I haven't used before and has I thought rather a fetching neckline and collar and I'm going to be sort of melding them together and using this fabulous early 60s yellow rose fabric and I'm also planning of course well <laughs> And I say I'm planning on using a vintage sewing machine. I always use a vintage sewing machine, so. <laughs> but everything should be completely in keeping with the period. Oh, and I'm wearing, just lean back, <laughs> have a, a, a sort of a look, a rather gorgeous print, late 1930s dress. So. <laughs> There we go. I shall get on and show you how it all went. So what I'm going to do is to cut out each pattern piece individually. So here I've got one of the bodice front pieces and I've centered the line of yellow roses just going down the front there, central to one side and then I will repeat it and make absolutely sure that each body side will match and the back is one piece that's all right I'll make sure that the roses are center in the back and obviously <laughs> they're all facing upright as well and then on this bodice piece you can see that deep bust start which is absolutely characteristic of the 50s and 60s to create that very kind of uplifted pointy shape and also a quite a deep uh, waist start uh, to create that <laughs> look of the tiny waists so very much still sharing in these early 60s the desire to create that hourglass figure. So obviously it's more time consuming to cut out the pattern this way but worth it because it's such a big bold design. The pattern matching and pattern placement in fact is going to be so vital to how the finished garment looks. Is it helpful? I don't think so. I don't think it's helpful. Pixie, you helping mum? Not really. So that is the right side bodice piece cut out. To cut the other bodice front, the left side, I turn the pattern piece over and if we look at the right side that I've cut out, I've got the rose centered there under the shoulder, but if I do that there, I haven't got quite enough fabric. So I'm going to need to bring this pattern piece down here but then I haven't got enough fabric here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to bring the pattern piece further down the fabric and position it here and this is of course why the more you have to pattern match a fabric and this obviously large bowl design one-way print it's <laughs> it was always going to be a pattern matching challenge but you do need more fabric if you are pattern matching a print like this. I mean, luckily I have lots of fabric, but I think this illustrates quite well why you need more. And something else I just noticed while I was matching 
this right side of the bodice is that the roses are not the same <laughs> all the way down so if I matched here the leaf design and the roses going down don't actually match because every alternate rose is slightly different so I actually need to pull the pattern piece further down to match the particular rose and you can just see that here so if I show you this pattern piece there's this sort of rose which has these sort of two leaves here and then there's the more closed up rose which has a kind of different leaf design so I can't match that one there the pattern piece here because that's a more closed up rose and on the other shoulder I have a more open rose so I do need to pull it down further to match the roses correctly and I've actually moved my pattern piece again because I realized there are in fact three kinds of roses there's the closed up one or the more closed up one the really full open one but then also a sort of three quarter open one so I had done my first pattern piece still care uh, I done my first pattern piece with the three quarter rose at the top so I have now moved the pattern piece so that I have this rose at the top and then the same style of roses going down the bodice and I started as usual by doing all the tailor's tacks for the markings and then I stitched the darts into the front bodice, those waist darts and bust darts that I showed you earlier on the pattern pieces. You can see there my Edwardian S-Bend mannequin that will be coming in useful for a project soon. And this is my Singer 201 cane, just showing you how easy it is to reverse on it. And with the front dart shown, I then sewed the darts into the back bodice, which has waist darts and shoulder darts. And then I stitched the facing together at the shoulder seams. It's just the front of the bodice that has a facing around the neckline and the front. The skirt has a kind of grown on facing. You, know, you just turn over the front edge to create the facing for the buttons and buttonholes. And I need the facing now because of course I'm going to be doing band buttonholes down the front of the dress. I sewed the front and the back of the bodice together along the shoulders and the side seams using French seams because it's a nice fine cotton. And then I sewed the skirt pieces together and I was able to use the selvage edges as the finishing edge. And once that was done, I was able to do the pleating in the same way as I did for the Brigitte Bardot dress into the waist seam. So I'll show you where I am with my sewing. So this is the skirt. And what I did was because this is quite a narrow vintage fabric, I used the full width to cut out the panels for the skirt. And that means it's a little wider than the Brigitte Bardot skirt I made. So it's ultra full, but it seems a shame just to kind of cut a little narrow strip off the end that I probably wouldn't be able to use. So it's really wide and obviously I've matched the design going across. So there were three, should I pull this down for you? There were three different styles of roses in this fabric so the three quarter the slightly closed and the fully blown rose then i've done eight band button hurls down the front of the skirt including in this if you saw my planning video i was going to do the roses in a horizontal direction across the hem of the skirt as a kind of fun contrast to the vertical roses on the main body of the skirt. So 
that's what the hem of the skirt looks like and then at the top of the skirt I've just pleated from the top side as per the instructions on the Brigitte dress from the top side I've pleated outwards towards the sides of the skirt and then I've just tacked those pleats down to keep them in place before I stitch on the bodice and obviously I've checked that the skirt and the bodice fit and then there are also pleats on the back of the skirt and I've matched the centre of the roses within a pleat so I've brought those into the centre and, and I've just done a little row of top stitching just down at the very top before those pleats will flare out and that was just mainly for uh, pattern matching purposes so that the roses will look good down the back of the skirt. This is how far I am with the bodice. I want to slip stitch the facing down. I've done three band button holes down the front of the bodice and as you can see I have made sure that the types of roses match across the bodice so not just as a rose symmetrically on each side but it's the same kind of rose. The only place where I'm not totally happy is where the darts are and you can see that that rose that's a bit more caught in the seam but there's actually wasn't anything I could do about that because as you can see the roses are not symmetrical so if you notice there are kind of more leaves on this side of the rose so the darts are symmetrical anyway <laughs> mustn't get obsessed that was as good as I could manage while making sure that the darts were in the right place obviously so matches across the bust and across the shoulders there and then if I turn it round we have the roses centered down the back of the bodice and the leaves down each side there are a few different collar options that the pattern gives you they do give the option for like a double collar so I did walk down Gold Hawk Road up and down looking for a plain shade of this yellow to do a contrast colour but I wasn't that surprised I couldn't find it but you can do a kind of double lead colour or detachable colour and what I decided to do because it's a big bold pattern and I didn't want just little you know bitty bits of it showing up in the colour I actually used organza to make this really airy. I bought this organza to make 30s, 1930s colours with actually, but I thought that would just add a really light little ethereal touch to the neckline. So that's the collar's done and I'm just going to stitch it around the edge there and I like the way that it's translucent and the roses just come through i think it lends a kind of lightness and airiness to the design and while i've got the bodice out i will show you the button options so there are three buttons on the bodice there's a button on each cuff so five and then another eight buttons on the skirt so i need that 13 buttons in all so although I love these mother of pearl ones I only have five the other options were these which I have enough of and would look pretty I also have these they're just a little slightly very slightly darker yellow though I have these white ones which were contender they would look really pretty but my favorites were these gray vintage ones which kind of echo the actually the leaves are a kind of grayish olive green but they kind of echo or these ones which are 
the exact same lemon yellow as the roses and I'm going to go with these ones because one of these that made up my mind for me was that there are only nine of these and there are 12 of these which admittedly I need 13 but I think I can just do something else maybe on the very lowest button on the hem of the skirt so I'm going to add those ones I think oh, no. uh, yeah I think those are just I like that little extra pop of lemon yellow I, I think yes and I'm also going to make a little belt for the dress and I got all my belt buckles and there was only one contender I mean it's just too perfect isn't it <laughs> I think it it's like the little jagged edge like just echoes the jagged edge of the leaves and I think that is just too perfect not to use if I put that with the button so I've got the kind of greyish of the it's actually clear well it's a sort of murky misty glass I think that is just really pretty and it just makes you love the whole thing of dressmaking doesn't it really you'd never get these little special touches like the colour and the buttons in the buckle on a bought garment you can just only really add these little special vintage touches yourself and then we have the sleeves which I have also pattern matched so the roses go down each sleeve vertically and the different types of roses will match from arm to arm and the method for the cuffs is it's one that you see in a lot of vintage patterns you basically just machine stitch this little kind of dart shape cut into it and then create a little kind of bias strip and stitch that around the edges just to complete that opening and then the cuff I've also <laughs> it's a bit obsessive isn't it uh, this wouldn't really be necessary but you know couldn't resist I've also pattern matched a rose to carry on down the cuff so the hem of the sleeve is going to be gathered into that cuff and then the cuff I've done that band button curl going by a little button like that so all I have to do now is finish the sleeves and the cuffs attach them to the bodice and stitch the bodice onto the dress and sew on the collar and the buttons but it actually is time to upload the video <laughs> so I don't think I'm going to make it and, oh I've got to make the belt as well haven't I I'll edit the video just before the reveal I wanted to show you the nice little finishing touches so there are my buttons in their brown button holes my lovely delicate organza collar with a little pointy collar with the roses just sort of showing through there and then for the belt I chose to use the a really patterned part of the fabric so that the belt would show up so I've got the leaves and the roses going across the belt and then that lovely vintage buckle and starting off the reveal with that rather wonderful belt buckle I'm out in my mother's garden I'm training her up as a videographer she's not terribly keen but I think she'll learn to love it and the border collie is directing the shoot as you can see and I'm actually rather thrilled with the dress I thought I would just never <laughs> it would never finish when I was sewing it it felt like there was always something more to do oh I haven't slip stitched down the facing on the skirt anyway it felt like I would never finish it but I finally have finished it 
and I am actually really pleased with it. There's always that moment, isn't there, before you put on the final thing. Well, I I think there is, where I think, oh, what if it just looks terrible? And so there's always a moment of relief, and I actually would call it relief rather than joy. But so I did feel relieved, but I also have to say that I felt joyful sewing this dress well not at the end when I was starting to get stressed about missing my YouTube deadline but during it there was something about those yellow roses that were really joyful it was such a kind of fresh and pretty fabric and as you can see those kind of lines of roses really enabled me to just sort of play with the direction in that horizontal band around the hem of the skirt and I like how that turned out. You can see that our UK weather is very variable at the moment. We're literally getting everything even in the course of one photo shoot. Well actually not rain, we've had an awful lot of that so at least I didn't get rained on but it was pretty breezy which was actually rather good I thought for showing off the skirt. I do have two petticoats underneath the skirt to just you know poof it out a bit because I used all that fabric even more than I used for the Brigitte dress because I didn't want to cut a little bit off the width of that rather narrow vintage fabric seemed a shame to waste it so I used really rather large panels on the skirt so yes there's lots of it and uh, as usual I'm sorry about the kind of weather effects of but it really was kind of yeah here, there comes the sun you see suddenly a kind of blaze of sunshine but it was literally going sunny gloomy and cloudy sunny gloomy and cloudy so uh, anyway I thought you wouldn't you wouldn't mind a few kind of changing uh, light and weather effects it actually shows off the <laughs> the dress in, in a way that rather floaty ethereal collar which I really liked really pretty it did get very blown around during this photo shoot so it doesn't lie flat in a, well, a strong breeze. And I guess the main thing of this entire project is obviously the pattern matching. And I am quite pleased with it. The roses go down the outside of the sleeve, as I hope they would uh, fall like that, and they do. And I think all the pattern matching that I did obsess over rather during the course of the project. I feel the obsession was worth it. I hope you enjoyed seeing me make my yellow rose dress and you will join me next week to make a rather fabulous uh, swing hooded cape with the same fabric used as the lining. I shall look forward to seeing you then and if you would like this video um, and consider subscribing <laughs> that would be lovely. See you next week. <laughs>